Welcome, everyone, uh, to tonight's recording. Uh, I'm Trent Meissenheimer with the Utah Avalanche Center. On the Zoom with me here is Mike Wessler from the National Weather Service right here in Salt Lake City. Uh, he's a meteorologist, and we're going to talk a little bit about weather tonight. Uh, welcome, Mike. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Trent. Um, to get started, we have a what seems to me is a multi-day big event, atmospheric river, if you want to call it, uh, but it's on our doorstep. So, Mike, could you kind of walk me through the details? I know it's a big and complicated storm, but let's start with just this first piece, which I understand is kind of Tuesday into Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, so we have, like you said, a, a strong storm on our doorstep. There's an area of low pressure or a trough. Uh, if you know a little bit more of the meteorological lingo, we've got our troughs and ridges are low pressure and high pressure systems. Uh, this trough of energy, this next storm system, is sitting right off the coast of Washington and Oregon. Uh, they're already feeling the effects of this atmospheric river with heavy precipitation. Um, and that's going to move into northern Utah, central Utah, and southern Utah. Uh, by Tuesday morning, and you're looking at a fairly long duration event with precipitation starting Tuesday morning and continuing through Wednesday morning for northern portions of the state uh, and Wednesday evening for central and southern portions of the state. Um, now, if you've heard the term atmospheric river, um, you may know some, some about it already, but I'll just give a quick rundown. An atmospheric river you can think of as a really strong fire hose of moisture. Um, and with that comes warmer temperatures, stronger winds, um, and just a ton of precipitation over a fairly short period of time. Um, overall, we're looking at two to three inches of water across the Utah mountains, uh, and maybe a half inch of water or more for a lot of the valley locations. Um, and so if I, if I share my screen here, I can show you uh, just the storm track that we're looking at over the next hey, couple of and, days. And Mike, just just to be clear, it's it's Monday night right now at 10 o'clock. So we're talking literally by the time probably most of the public watches this, we'll, we'll be seeing the first snowflakes kind of move our way, correct? Absolutely, yeah. We're here just taking a look at the forecast for the next storm system. But by the time you guys are seeing this, you'll likely see snow across the northern mountains and central mountains already. Uh, really looking at 8 o'clock in the morning Tuesday, for onset of precipitation and really picking up by 11 or noon. Nice. Uh, so like I said, tonight the storm is on our doorstep moving through the Pacific Northwest. You can see this area of blue colors here. That's our low pressure system moving into the region. Um, that'll sag south through Utah uh, by Wednesday. And ahead of that system, if I just move over here, you can see we've got a really really significant fire hose of moisture. These warm red colors are areas where we have a lot of moisture transport. Um, and this is just moving a ton of water off the Pacific Ocean into the Intermountain West. Uh, now this plume will sag south through the state. We'll see elevated moisture transport as well as broad lift in the synoptic scale storm. Um, so this isn't just a small orographic event where we get an inch or two here and there. We're talking periods where you could get half an inch of water in six hours, mm. um, really significant precipitation. Um, the heavy of this is gonna be Tuesday evening through Wednesday night. Um, there's portions of the overnight period where uh, precipitation rates could exceed, uh, you know, two tenths of an inch an hour at times in some of the mountains. Now we always think about Northern Utah doing really well in these snowstorms, but this Southwest wind setup uh, with this strong atmospheric river, you can see this plume just creeps around the southern half of the Sierra. And what that's going to do is really set the southern mountains up to do incredibly well. Um, I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility to see two and a half inches of water or more in the southern mountains uh, by the end of the event. Um, where the spread in the Utah, uh, northern Utah mountains is a little larger, you know, as low as say two inches or one and a half inches up towards Logan. Um, and then potentially as high as two and a half to three inches in the Cottonwoods and kind of central and southern Wasatch. Uh, so really statewide significant precipitation event. Um, real quick, let's talk about some winds. So yeah. obviously west-southwest flow here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Speak to me about some winds. It looks like you got a, another model here. Yeah. 
So we, we always like to think about things in terms of uncertainty uh, and how high the winds could get on top of our best guess forecast. Now these atmospheric rivers transport an immense amount of moisture with winds. Um, so really you can't have a strong atmospheric river without a significant increase in your winds. Um, and so here we're looking at, you know, after 5 a.m., we'll start to see winds creep up above 50 mile per hour gusts at the 11,000 foot ridge lines. Sustains kind of 20 to 30 throughout the day. Those should be fairly, um, fairly level. Don't really see the sustained winds going too strong. Um, but we, what we do have is potential for wind gusts around 75 to 80 mile per hour in the higher terrain, especially in the central and southern Wasatch. Um, yeah. And that's gonna, that's definitely gonna uh, okay. play a factor in um, reducing yeah, our snowfall yeah. densities uh, or increasing our snowfall densities, but decreasing our ratios uh, and giving us really dense, wet, heavy snow as this warm, windy system moves in. All right. Okay. Uh, so real quick, what are what do you think in totals for uh, central and northern Utah? What do you what do you think we'll see out of the first wave? I understand it's a multi-day storm, but Tuesday moving into Wednesday, yeah. What do you think we're going to see here total wise? Yeah. Now everybody loves to look at the plumes, and you know you can hang your hat on whichever number you want to. But the most useful thing about the plumes here is they give us a spread of possibilities. Uh, you know we calibrate our best guess, our deterministic forecast to the spread that's presented to us by ensembles. Um, so what we're looking at here is realistically for the Northern mountains, two to three inches of water from Tuesday morning through Wednesday evening. Um, that's gonna be a little less up towards the Logan area mountains. They're gonna be a little more cut off from the best moisture transport. Um, the Southern Wasatch in Southwesterly flow tend to do quite well. Yep. Uh, your typical yep. Brighton, Park City, Deer Valley, as well as your Pro Provo. Provo. Yep, Provo Canyon, I was just gonna say. Um, so you'll see a gradient from, say, three inches where you have the most favored areas uh, up to maybe an inch and a half or as low as an inch and a quarter for the Bear Rivers and the Wellsvilles. Um, and again, the southern mountains really do well in this setup. And for the southern mountains, we could be looking at two to three inches of water. Okay. So like you said, a big story. We just only talked about one piece of maybe three. Um, the last thing we didn't cover was uh, temperatures, but to me, it looks like we're going to see snow levels kind of around that seven to 8,000 foot range. And then as that storm progresses, we're going to see that lowering down to the valley floors. Does that seem about right? Yeah. I would say by Tuesday morning, we're looking at snow levels of 6,000 to 7,000 feet. Uh, so your lower elevation trailheads, you may experience periods of rain. Um, that mid-elevation snowpack is definitely going to see some water at the onset of the event. Yep. The question is how quickly the cold air will follow the initial atmospheric river. Uh, so once we entrain some of that cold air uh, behind the first pulse of moisture, we'll see snow levels fall towards 5,000 feet. And at that point, you can start seeing some of your valley locations getting into the mix. Um, and with that, you know, we are expecting kind of upright snowfall. We're expecting it to start dense and finish light, your classic Utah storm. Uh, yep. But again, the atmospheric rivers, you know, you get this Pacific moisture source and this strong southwesterly flow, it's going to come in warm and windy. Yep, yep. Um, okay, cool. Again, one piece of three. Uh, to me, it looks like we're going to have a rest of a, you know, we're going to come out of 2022 really wet and uh, lots of snowfall, which is uh, really exciting for us. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yep. it's you know, we we really are locked into an active pattern right now. Uh, it's the storm track is favorable for statewide Utah snow, uh, and it looks to stay that way. Like you said, one piece of three in the short term. We're looking at this storm Tuesday to Wednesday, another storm Thursday to Friday, and then another storm for your weekend. Really, three distinct pieces with brief breaks in between them. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of purple off the west coast there, which which is uh which is what we want to see. So. <laughs> Um, Mike, thank you so much for taking some time with us tonight. Uh, you know, it really helps us out. Look at look at the weather. And speaking of the weather, the avalanche conditions are going to be rising. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Um, we might see a avalanche warning, an avalanche, um, you know, some really dangerous conditions. So please stay tuned. Uh, visit weather.gov 
uh, slash Salt Lake City uh, for weather. And for uh, all things Avalanche, please visit utahavalanchecenter.org. Stay tuned into the forecast and please everybody be really safe from now through the new year. Mike, thank you so much for, for having me tonight and uh, putting this together for us. Thanks, Chad.